Welcome to the Brand Clarity Podcast, hosted by Visions to Images and Susie Libertor. The Brand Clarity Podcast highlights several different topics, including entrepreneurship, franchises, and digital marketing trends. Visions to Images helps corporations and franchises with their branding, website, paid advertising, and digital marketing. Hello, everybody. Today on the podcast, I have Michael Morehouse, president of Mosquito Shield Franchise. I'm super excited to have him here. He is a powerhouse. He's been with the company for many, many years and recently just president. So I'm excited to dive on in. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So tell us kind of how you got started. I mean, I was just talking to you. You've been with the company for 15 years, but recently you became the president. So how did that even shift? Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, it's a long journey and it's been a wonderful one. Not many people these days seem to stick with the same company anymore. It still shocks me sometimes to think that it's been over 15 years, but I started with the original founder of Mosquito Shield who was actually a uh, franchisee in a lawn care business. And okay. it was in the 2008 timeframe when the economy was really starting to tank and his lawn care business was was following suit. And he hired me as a consultant to build a new sales model for lawn care. And um, that went really well. And uh, he kept me on. And during the, like around 2010 is when he asked me to kind of just pay more attention to the mosquito business. We were this little local mosquito mm-hmm. company in Massachusetts that really proved to be uh, recession proof. So during that 08, 09 crash, Mosquito Shield kept growing even while his lawn care had slowed down quite a bit. So in 2011, he tasked me with taking the the opportunity to turn it into a franchise. So I spent about 18 months building it. And then we launched in 2013 as a franchise entity. And I started just going around the country doing the you know business opportunity and expo shows and dabbled in some friend dev marketing and grew it from zero to you know where we are today and uh we've got 116 owners that represent about 365 territories around the country that growth put us on really the radar for acquisition and in March of 2022 we were acquired by five star franchising okay and that uh, at that point is when I was moved to uh, brand president well, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been an it's been an amazing journey. I'm obviously super passionate about the brand, you know, really the quality of life service that we provide to homeowners. Uh, and that's really to me what it's all about. And it's been a it's been a fun ride. Absolutely. And I love how you've kind of like developed and grown into it. So that's exciting. Um, so let's talk a little bit about. Well, first, let's talk about multi-owner. So it seems like with 365 territories and 116 owners, there's definitely some overlap with multi-location owners. Is that accurate? It is. Yeah. Your math is better than mine. We average about three, (laughs) two and a half to three territories per owner. And I think that's something that just evolved over the years where we've fallen into this niche of you know, somebody coming through the process of considering um, becoming a franchisee of Mosquito Shield, they look at the history, the past, what the most successful franchisees have done up up to this point. And, you know, when they look at markets, they're like, yeah, I want to own that area. I want to own that area. Yeah. And it's just fallen into about this two and a half, three pack scenario for us that seems to be, you know, the right fit for our brand. That's incredible. Yeah. I know so many people try to try to sell the multi-location owner and it sometimes does work and sometimes it doesn't. So it's always exciting to hear when they when it does work and how you can share to those who are looking to do that. Yeah. And I'll add that, you know, we do treat it a little differently. So if somebody comes in and they buys three territories, we're not tasking them to start in year one with three vans and three technicians. Right. Okay. We still treat it as where is the lowest hanging fruit for you? Where can you get the best foundational growth going? And then we'll advance into those other markets as time goes. So with that, you want to make sure you're doing, you know, your job on 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 the owner and that it's it's the right fit for your brand. You always want to be very you know, cognizant of that in Fran Dev. And um, and I think from the very beginning, going back to 2013, you know, having I think it's seven of our original first 10 franchisees ever. Like mm-hmm. we've been very mindful of that and, and really meaningful in the people that we try to partner with. So um, we're not looking to sell multi-units. It's just that's how it's evolved over time. 
let's back up a second too. So you started franchising 11 years ago. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So when would you say that it really fully developed as far as locations? How many years did it take you? Yeah. So we, in 2020, in the early spring, right before the pandemic, yeah. we partnered with an FSO. Okay. So we partnered with Franchise Fast Lane, and that was about a year in in development of of um, really aligning and making sure we felt like as a brand we were ready and right. um, and that they were the right partner. And both boxes got checked on that. And they, along with Mosquito Shield, Fast Lane, Franchise Fast Lane, and ourselves, just went on really a historic run of growth. And it was really timed up. Susie, with the the pandemic and right. home services really becoming in, um, very popular, and a lot of people were at home furloughed during the yeah. pandemic and wondering what their white collar corporate careers were going to look like, sure. and started considering business ownership. So, you know, the timing couldn't have been better, both from our where we were as a brand, really having really founded Mosquito Control as a company twenty plus years ago. And, you know, I think Fastlane saw that as an opportunity to put a stake in the ground in a, a fairly new emerging industry in mosquito right. control. And that was the opportunity that we had. And, um, you know, three years later, we are still on quite a run with franchise development. Okay. So next, I always love asking people, and there's, and this question is probably a little bit different, depending on if you talk about franchisor or franchisee. But how do you find the leads? Let's talk specifically about the Fran Dev. Like, how are you finding these um, owners that want to come in? So, on the Fran Dev side, and I'm happy to speak to both of them. On the Fran Dev side, it's through Fastlane as our FSO, right? Okay. So they they have the network relationships. They work with a lot of the consultant networks that are out there. These are people that are considered business coaches really for the most part. So somebody, you know, you're in a, again, you're in a career that you're not happy with. You start poking around and looking at business opportunities. They're kind of living in that space, you know, trolling that market for lack of a better word. And they come across you and say, Hey, have you ever considered business ownership? They talk to you, they do a little bit of a profile on you and say, Hey, you know, based on learning a little bit about you, I think you set up well to be an owner of, and they usually pre present three to five brands to yeah. you. Okay. And then they turn them over to the FSO. So the FSO, in our case, Franchise Fastlane, takes them through the process. And it's a very rigid, well-organized sales process. And I get involved very early on. So I host a, um, a leadership call every Tuesday. So anybody that is in the pipeline considering buying a franchise has the opportunity to talk to me or anyone on my leadership team at four o'clock every Tuesday. And then we do the same thing on Thursdays with existing franchisees. So again, okay. you're considering buying a Mosquito Shield. You can jump on a group call on Thursday at four. And every Thursday, it's a different franchisee from Mosquito Shield gotcha. that spends an hour talking about their experience being a franchisee. I so it's just a great smart. way yeah. to, to validate. So that's how the lead gen works on the Zor side. And then for our franchisees, we've got an incredibly robust marketing plan for them to generate leads based on, you know, 22 years of data and customer experience and, you know, where you need to be, the timing. This is a seasonal business for a lot of our franchisees. Sure. So timing of your marketing efforts is really critical, but that's a fully baked program for them. Yeah. Understood. So I like the idea of you kind of like having the videos um, every Tuesday, Thursday, and then switching franchisees. That's really powerful. Um, so people can kind of ask those questions and become familiar with you. I don't, I don't know many that I know of that really do that, to be honest. And I feel that's like been that's a real, yeah, that's been yeah. a real difference maker for us because one, it's a chance for candidates to learn a little bit more about the culture, right? So yeah. they'll ask me exactly. questions on a Tuesday. And then they can ask it differently to a franchisee on a Thursday, but it's likely they're going to get a um, a response that is that you know it's somewhat intertwined, right? But they're living it through the through the eyes of the franchisee. So they tend to ask the franchisees more openly than they ask me or anyone on my you know leadership team. But the idea of the Thursday call is, you know, we have sort of a 
with a hundred and something owners, we've got our roster of validators really fits everything. So yeah. if you are a husband wife team, we've got a group that validates. They have a rotation, but they'll they'll come right. on and validate. Yeah. Uh, if you're a young, you know, female that wants to start the business, or a young male that wants to be the owner operator and doing everything, we can kind of match you up with somebody that can speak to their experiences based on how you want to run your business. That's incredible. Hey there, I want to interrupt this episode with a quick message. If you're listening to this podcast episode and want to learn about branding your franchise or small business, then go to brandingbridge.com. That's branding-bridge.com. Do you do any type of paid advertising for FranDev? Well, again, that's handled through our FSO. Okay. We do a lot of organic stuff that, believe it or not, generates leads. No, organic. We're going to... When we are talking about like, what are our 10 top markets from a white space standpoint? So even though we've had this historic growth, we still have a lot of great territories available. So we want to make sure in the franchising world that these consultant networks, these business coaches Mm -hmm. don't turn us off in their minds thinking that 365 territories, that brand is great, but they're sold out, right? right? So. We do a lot of organic postings that way, whether it's sure. in you know platforms like LinkedIn or we'll do PR, so paid PR. Okay. Where we will push out press releases of yeah. you know our top 10 markets. We also we like to promote our new franchisees. So we'll do paid PR for when a new franchisee comes on board. And that always generates interest as well. So just some really like old school, well done, well placed PR efforts go a long way to drive awareness for your brand. Well, and I think it's one of those things where when it's shown with value and growth, it's better than you just saying, hey, come franchise with us, right? So you always, Always. and telling that story and all of that, sharing it is important and critical. And the good thing about that is it's going to help with SEO and it's going to be shared on different platforms, et cetera. So you can always go back years later and it'll still be there for the most part. So I love No, you're right. It's a really great, really, really smart connection just to when you're, when you're looking at building a brand, right? You want that, you want that rich organic content and you want the links and the connections because over time that just gets stronger and stronger for you and it helps just build the organic's the best, least expensive way to grow, right? So the more you can do for those efforts, the better. Yeah. And sometimes um, it depends on how, I mean, you've been around for many, many years and the company has. So it just depends too how how big and new the company is because organic can take longer if you're just starting off. But if you've been building it on the back end, organic is good. I always say you always need organic period, but then you also- Well, need- I think that's the, yeah, the point I, I wanted to make, trying to make is that you starting out as an emerging brand should be yeah. thinking of that from day one. Absolutely. Well, you won't reap the rewards immediately from it because, you know, as you know, SEO is an evergreen effort that is just something you need to be sticking at yes. and just going at um, and committed to. You can't look for the short wins as an emerging brand. Nope. While you might get some, you're not going to build that long term, really, that fundamental best practices to grow your brand. What kind of tip would you give somebody if they are just kind of looking to get started into the franchise, whether they're trying to be franchisee or franchisor, what would you give them? Yeah. On the franchisee side, uh, I love these platforms because it's not about me selling a Mosquito Shield franchise. I mean, that's what we do, right? And we've done really well with that. But I love just empowering people for business ownership. I think that... um, if you've had that itch at all as, as an adult and you've always wanted or aspired to owning business and you start looking into it, I think there's a couple of tips. One is don't fall victim of the you know paralysis by analysis where you just overthink things so much. Look at look at clear KPIs, right? Look at whatever industry you're in, does the brand differentiate? Right. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like proprietary proprietary things are really important because how do you differentiate as a brand? Right. So keeping that, keeping that in mind and then taking the leap. Like at the end of the day, you got to do it. Right. So do your homework, validate. So we already talked about that a little bit, but talk to talk to people that are in that brand, both on the leadership, you know, learn who you're going to be working with and then learn who your peers are and, and talk to other franchisees of that brand. So whether a brand holds holds a formal validation process like we do. Mm-hmm. 
um, you as a candidate looking at buying a franchise has access to every owner of that franchise. And I would recommend reaching out and talking to them because that is really what you're going to learn and what you're going to hear to support the decision you're thinking about making. But I think just taking that leap, I think that's the exciting part. I think that's what people get really, sometimes they get close to that finish line and they don't go all the way, but that's my encouragement is do your homework. But if you're thinking about it, you know, you, you'll never look back if you, if you jump in and do it. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of times people, and I, I laughed when you said, get out of your head or whatever, something like you can go around in your head all the time, questioning, doubting, saying all of these things and finding reasons to not do it. Right. But at the end of the day, look at the reasons why you want to do it. What can you do? And maybe, maybe the brand's not good for you. Try a different brand. Right. So it's just like, if you have that itch to make it possible and happen and so many people these days have entrepreneur itches, I mean, I'm always looking for the next thing as well. So if you have those itches, figure it out. Yeah. I just told a funny story. Um, I thought it was funny, but uh, just the other day on a, on a call, I did a show many years ago. Uh, it was the first franchise show I ever did. So going and pitching our wares, first time okay. setting the booth up. It was in Virginia. It was the the Washington, D.C. slash Virginia Franchise Expo. Okay. April of 2013. Remember it vividly. We sold two franchisees who are still with us from that show. Amazing. And had three other check writers that were for those two territories. So it was potentially five deals from the very first show I ever did. But there was a guy at that show that I met that was at a with a competing territory. And he just dragged his feet and dragged his feet. And I finally had to tell him, hey, the other couple, the other, the other group made the decision and we're moving forward with them. Yeah, I went back and did that show in 2019, so six or seven years lo- later, and I'm at my booth, and I said, "Hey," and I'll, I'll protect the innocent and not use his name, but I'm like, "What are you doing here?" So here's a guy still shopping for a ter- I mean, for a franchise seven or eight years later. So that's a guy that's never going to make the decision. Absolutely, right? that is pretty funny, though. It is. I mean, it's funny yeah. and, and ironic and crazy and all of that, but it's one of those things. Yeah, if he's been doing it for eight years and hasn't found anything, it's like. Yeah. Are you really into this? <laughs> exactly. Yep. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, if anybody wants to learn more about you or connect, how can they do that? Well, a couple of things. One, I would certainly follow us on LinkedIn or myself on LinkedIn. So Michael Morehouse on LinkedIn or um, Mosquito Shield Franchise on LinkedIn. Sincerely, if anybody's in either one of those categories you just talked about, so launching an emerging brand as a franchise or, or considering franchise ownership, Michael at MoShield.com, email me. I'm more than happy to, I'd love to give back in that sense. So more than happy to talk to someone that's considering business ownership and help them, you know, kind of navigate that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, love working with the emerging franchisors because I've been there yes. um, and, and been in the trenches and know how tough it can be to get, you know, your first sale and then, Absolutely. you know, your 10th franchisee and then your 50th franchisee and what has to happen in the back end to build out the support they need for that. So always like to be available. So don't hesitate to reach out. That's so kind. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for listening in on today's brand clarity episode with Susie Libertor. Two things. First and foremost, please, if you liked this episode, please subscribe and leave some positive reviews. Also, don't forget to sign up for Stop Sending Your Customers to the competition and get my insider secrets to compelling branding that converts. You can find that at branding-bridge.com. It's a free workbook for you to check out right now all of the branding techniques and strategies that I use for my paying clients.